Hello everybody, and welcome back to Rexar Plays Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Last we left off, we were chased around by a giant glowing pig, and this motherfucking machine stole my swag teddy. So now, we are going to murder it. Horribly, horribly painfully. Yes. So, screw this machine for stealing my teddy. Ew, what the fuck is that? That is disgusting. But it's also good. That means we have some way of killing it for stealing my swag teddy. Because before I was just doing this because it's the game purpose and like the game storyline. But now, mm -mm, now it's personal. You stole my swag teddy. I steal your life. Screw you. Right, so I guess we're going... Stairway somewhere, maybe? Ah. Close enough. Ah, what is going on? Jesus. What the fuck is this? Okay. Very nice. Ah, we are charging it. Right, we need to charge one more. I have you now, creature. I will destroy you. Uh -huh. Stop him! Stop him! Kill him! It is over. It is time to end this madness. Yeah, you stole my swag, Teddy. Yeah, it is over. It is very fucking over. If I could just find wherever I came from, that would be lovely. Ah. Edwin, Oswald, and I. What if it's Oswald? Also, there's no text here. This is Enoch, Edwin, Oswald, and I. That's all. Okay. So. Is this the part where he dies horribly and, like, screams of suffering so that I can sit there and go, ha ha ha, you stole my swag today, I stole your life. And that, yeah. Okay, bright white screen. Ah, here we go. Listen to your heart. You know you are with me. You created me to save the world. I am your friend. Mm -hmm. And then you stole my swag, Teddy. You should not have done that. Oh God, who are you? Are you? Yes, you're very naked. Who are you? Oh, you look very happy. Big. Screaming smile on your face. Oh god, your eyes look as full of cables inside your mouth, and I can't jump. Then you gotta like a pump on your penis. Okay, that's kind of weird, but sure. So wait, how did I get from that place to here? Mandus, please, I am no more evil than you. You stole my swag, Teddy. To save humanity, ridding them of their painful, stupid, pointless lives. Uh huh. And then you stole my swag, Teddy. And that's when you fucked Man, up, dude. Stop. Think about what you are doing. I'm for killing you for stealing my swag, Teddy. Not speak of my children, monster. I did not kill your children. Oh. You sacrificed them on the temple steps, knowing what the coming century would do to them. Your uh -huh. sons will drown, lungs full of mm. blood and shrapnel on the banks of the song. You want to save them from the horror to come. Oh, that that is them. the vision we shared. Everything we have built to avert this coming nightmare. You oh, and I are one. We are the same. Our souls are entangled. Except I had a swag teddy and we took it away. Free.
Where's Gargoyle? Is that you? Oh, hello. Oh, there's a pig with the, like, the, the children. Murdering your ass for stealing my swag teddy. A child's shadow burnt into the brickwork. A house of skulls in the jungle. The innocent, the innocent Mandus trod and bled and gassed and starved and beaten and murdered and enslaved. This is your coming century. They will eat the Mandus. They will make pigs of you all and they will bury their scalps into your ribs and they will eat your hearts. That is all irrelevant. You stole my swag teddy. You should not have stole my swag teddy, dude. I don't give a shit. You are so dead. It's kind of cool. It seems that he had a, like a vision of like the World War Two and decided to kill his children rather than let them live through the World War Two, and that made him create this machine so that he could, in some weird, strange, messed up way, help the world, like save it from World War Two instead of like Hitler and America and I England or whatever killing everybody. He you. killed them. Stop it. My father, you cannot destroy me! Yeah, well, you destroyed my swag teddy. You stole my swag teddy Please and removed it. For your children! Fuck you. Oh god, is that a... That's a kid. Ew. Oh god. Oh. Why are there like my children on this chair? The fuck? There's so something. Oh. Oh, that looks unpleasant. Oh, this is not gonna be good. I feel it. Oh, that was nice. Right. So I... I killed myself. Mm. Can't move my mouse. Alright. Oh, Some kind of ending credits. Yeah. Kind of cool. So rather than let the world be destroyed by World War II, he, in his own fucked up way, I lay there to save it. and watched the yeah. god I had created die. At the end, when we were cold as the stone we had hewn his body from, when the lights were nearly all extinguished, we heard in the silent distance the man pig singing to one another. Then. 
as the last lights were gone, and we lay together in the deep, they drifted away, and all was silent. Such a silence I have never known. And as the dust settled on my open eyes, and we lay together embraced forever, I heard, miles above us, the sounds of the city turning over in its sleep. A church bell ringing out, and in that moment, the new century was born. Right, this is in December. This occurred in December. So, New Year's? From the 19th to the 20th century. Yeah, wow, well, that was a very intense ending compared to um, um, The Dark Descent. Oh, it was made by Chinese women, published by Fictional Games. Right. That's interesting, though. Like, th there are people that says that um, this game isn't as scary as The Dark Descent because we have unlimited lantern and there's not as much, I don't know, horror, for, horror moments in this game, but I think they're wrong. I mean, this game had much, much more, like, atmosphere than uh, The Dark Descent. Also, it's really distracting trying to talk while someone is singing in the background, so that's why I'm very silent and, yeah. Well, that, that's kind of cool. He actually went... He went to that temple in Mexico after his wife died with his children, and he, it was super clean regarding to the notes. And uh, he went insane and somehow saw the Second World War that was coming and decided to sacrifice his kids so that he wouldn't have to suffer through that war. And then, I guess he built this machine, made a, a, a clone of himself, or... I'm not sure about that. I mean, it was someone in the machine, so maybe he, like, copied his mind or extracted his dark side into that body and... Like, yeah, I can't speak, too much singing in the background, but as I was saying, I think it like extracted his, like, the dark side of his mind that had appeared when he murdered his children in the temple, and that was the machine, and the idea was to cleanse the world, or something along those lines. Can you please stop singing so I can actually speak properly? The party that leans upon the workers but serves the Burgois in the period of the greatest sharpening of the class struggle but can cannot but sense the smells wafted from the waiting grave. Wafted from the waiting grave, oh, okay. But yeah, what kind of interesting storyline. So I think it begins with him. But then why did they wake up in the bed? I think he like he went to Mexico. He had some kind of religious, crazy spiritual experience where he saw the Second World War and knew that oh yeah, there's gonna be a giant war and lots of people are gonna die. And as a result of that, he murdered his children at the temple because the ch the temple was clean and he wanted his children to be clean or something like that. And then he came back and was super disturbed and buried the buried the children underneath the the do 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 whatever that plant was called. And then he he started building this machine because I remember they were being like, oh yeah, the people are filthy pigs. They just blah blah blah. The classes blah blah blah, and somehow Alexander 
fits into all this. Maybe he heard a story, something about the orb. He wanted like perfection. He don't wanted to stop the war. So in a sense, he wanted to do good, in a very sick and twisted and disturbed way. So he created this machine to create pigs, which explains the name of the game, a machine for pigs, a machine that creates pigs, turns humans into pigs. And the pigs are much docile and obedient and doesn't create wars and that kind of stuff. And he wanted to take over the world or turn everybody into pigmen, I think. And the machine was his dark side that had been created. And I guess he like extracted his dark side into the body, not thinking ahead. And then when he was free of the dark side, he was like, oh shit, what the fuck am I doing? So he tried to shut down the machine and go back to his home and like forget about all of that. But then the machine woke up and was like, yeah, your children, remember them? And he apparently had no memory of the children or something. And yeah, it's like, yeah, your children. Yeah, I guess he was like slightly mentally damaged from transferring his mind to the machine. So he forgot about his children having killed them. And the machine took advantage of that, was like, oh yeah, your children is here, they need help, come back, come back, restore me to functionality so I can uh, destroy the world. Um, I mean, rescue your children. And you proceed in doing that, and then he wakes up and he's like, ha ha ha, now I'm back, and I'm evil, and blah ha ha, I'm gonna take over the world. And then you go, oh shit, and you destroy him again, and now he begs for his life, and yeah. This storyline is really confusing, especially those notes and those loading screens. They Most of the time they make absolutely no sense. So it feels kind of pointless to have notes everywhere that doesn't actually explain anything. Because most of the storyline you get from those moments where you have, like, where you narrate him, where, where, what's his name, um, Mandos, where he narrates himself in the past or in the future or whatever, and you have those flashbacks of him talking to someone or doing something... And that, that tells the storyline, but the notes are just there for, I don't know, to give you some sense of, I'm doing something, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, like, doing anything besides just walking through the, the, the corridors to find this machine that I'm supposed to destroy, because the, the notes are really pointless. They, well, some are good, some are, explains the story, but most are just fluff. It's like... I guess like 25% of the notes are actually informative and tells you about the storyline and what's going on and the rest are just there to give you something. Oh, a note. I must take that. Oh, another note. I must take that. And yeah. But overall, it was a really good game. The atmosphere, especially in the beginning. Oh, the atmosphere. Oh, I've never been that apprehensive. Not even the Dark Descent had that sense of apprehension about it where you just sneak around it's like oh god what is that oh god what is that oh god what is that oh god something creaked oh god something made a noise oh god what is that oh god especially that hawk when they moved around things and you, you're not like sure did i remember that correctly did i see that correctly i mean now i i'm recording the episode so i can actually look back and be like oh yeah they moved that there or in the case of the hawk it was actually narrating like oh yeah that's that's uh, some kind of hall, some kind of eagle, or it was eagle, the eagle. It was there. I narrated it, and therefore I knew it was there. But then I come out, it's like, oh wait, it's been moved. But for a regular person, just plays through it, they'd go out there and be like, wait, wasn't that, wasn't this? And they're not sure about it, and that makes the game so much creepier because you're not sure. Like, was that moved? Was that not moved? Am I being going crazy? And they, it, it builds a sense of apprehension, like a, a subconscious apprehension, because you get unsure of things. And that was a really well made, but the storyline, and especially the, the system of the notes, it needs to be fleshed out a whole lot, because while the story could be understood, sort of, there's so many plot holes and holes in the story, like, they don't actually explain who is that dude in the the, the metal glass sarcophagus with, with cables in his eyes and mouths and, yeah, penis too. It's just, he's there. It's a, a talking machine and then suddenly a person in there, oh, the person was actually controlling the machine, but where did they come from? Uh, they talk about we are one of the same, but they are not the same. It's, an, it's a completely different person in there. 
And so, yeah, there's huge plot holes. But overall, this game is good. I'd give it a 9 out of 10, maybe 8, 9 out of 10. And the only reason I didn't, I, I'm not giving it a, 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 like a top score is because the storyline. The storyline is good, but it could have been so much better. But thankfully, the atmosphere and the, the overall like guidance of the game, like how they move things or how they point to subtly, in, in a subtle way, like go there, go there, it's, a, it's very, very well made. So yeah, it's a good game. Assuming I didn't ruin this game for you, you should definitely try it. So yeah, that was a machine for pigs. I'm not sure what to do next, but this has finished my introductory Amnesia series, so from this point on, I I will be doing other games, I suppose. Well, obviously I'll be doing other games, if there's no more Amnesia games, but yeah, I might be trying other games, maybe new other hard games, not sure, I'm not really good with horror games, I turn into a little girl that cries all the time, but eh, but yeah. So I'll I'll figure out a game to play and you'll see me in that playthrough. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching and for following me through this entire series despite me being part idiot and part little girl. And yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps people find my channel and it gives me much more incentive to actually make these videos and put them out so you have something to watch. So yeah, thank you for watching, and thank you for sticking through this entire series. Um, I will see you in the next game I play. So, until then, I shall see ya.